I am going to discuss about the nano colloidals. So, what is the use of the nano colloidals? So, colloidals means you are going to have the different group of molecules. They have been been placed in a one solution. It may be solid form, maybe liquid phase, or maybe gaseous phase. The colloid means group of molecules. Group of molecules they are in a one phase, the uniform phase. Then they are in a stable form, otherwise homogenization form. So they won't be disturbed. So best example we can take example of milk. Milk is a colloidal. It will have a protein. It will have a minerals. Then it will have a different types of uh, enzymes. We have it. So when you have the milk, so this milk pH will have maintain it to be normal form. It will be shows that a water form. You can filter that one. So when you add the one one drop of uh, uh, lemon juice to the milk, the colloidal nature will get disturbed because the pH of the milk will changes. So ultimately, the coral nature will get <coughs> disturbed. So here, <coughs> we can use the both the cases. So as a milk, we can use it. As a colloidal, we can use it. As a sorry breakdown molecule, denatured protein, we can use it for our human beings only. So for human welfare only, we can use. It. So here, in our nanoparticles, we are going to say that in nanotechnology. So we are going to use the nanoparticles as in colloidal forms. Means we are going to mix the different types of molecules. Suppose I want to make a drug molecule. I want to make a drug molecule. We can add the different drug molecules to have the multiple actions. Clear? So here I want to keep. So in olden days, you used to have the single drug molecule. Suppose fever, one drug molecule. Uh, cold, one drug molecule. Pain, one drug molecule. So we used to take that one. You used to take with different drugs. For instance, of, uh, um, we need to take the each different drugs. You have to take it. So fever, cold. So we have multiple systems symptoms. You have it. So when you have the disease, the person will have a disease. Will have multiple symptoms: body aches, body pains, fever, headache, uh, drowsiness. You will feel that one. So each and every one, we need we need to take the separate drug molecule. Instead of that one, they are going to prepare the ne colloidal form. They are going to mix the all the drug molecules in a mixture of drug molecules. They make a one one. They make a one drug molecule. That's called that is use of our. Colloidal molecules. So naturally, we have natural occurring colloids. We have it. Foam, we have it. Then milk, we have it. Smokes, detergents, and aerosols, blood, and paints, and cosmetics. They are the examples of colloids. They are the examples of colloids. Natural colloids are milk and blood. We can call as milk and blood. So take an example of blood now. So this blood is composed of different cells. R, B, C, W, B, C, eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils. So all this we are in a blood we have it, clear. Yeah. So R B C will carry the oxygen, W B C will give the production, plate will kill the other molecules, other bacteria, maybe viruses. So here this blood is nothing but a colloidal solution, colloidal liquid colloid, liquid colloidal solution. That is fluid connected tissue in your body. So when a blood clots, so ultimately person will go to death. So here when you have a blood transfusion, so also we will take the different types of transfusion. We have to take it. So same blood transfusion, we need to take it. A positive to A positive blood has to take it. Otherwise, universal donor has to take it. So like this, we have a the colloidal has to maintain it. Colloidal means the colloidal will give the different multiple functions. Clear? The colloidal will perform the colloidal molecules will perform the multiple functions instead of single function. So one suppose we will take example of RBC, it will perform only one function. But you have a in a colloidal form, RBC in colloidal form, it will perform the multiple functions along with other molecules. So this is a, we have different types of colloidals. We have it. So see this one. So we have this called as dispersion, dispersion system. Dispersion means they are in the united form. Dispersion means we can define that dispersion consists of the particle matter. What is that? Small particles distributed through a continuous phase. Dispersion medium. So particles they are in a medium. The particles means R B C, W B C, platelets, eosinophils. Everything is in a one medium, in a liquid medium, in a liquid medium, plasma. The plasma and serum. So these cells will be present in our plasma and serum. So this uh, this plate will go to the inside of our cell also. You go to our inside of our cell also. Clear? So this is the best example of our natural colloidal. So see this one. So these colloidals can be classified in biology. So in nano bio nano biotechnology, your colloidals can be classified three types. We can write it. One is molecular dispersions. One is that we can say that molecular dispersions. So here we can say about the particles invisible in microscope, electron microscope. 
you can't see that one. The particles you can't see in our microscope, but they are presented. They are present. Best example we can say that ordinary ions and glucose molecules. They are called as ordinary ions and glucose molecules pass through the semi permeable and filter paper. So when you allow these colliders, when you allow these colliders, molecular dispersions less than one nanometer. What is that? This molecular dispersion means the size of the collateral is less than one nanometer, so they can pass through the semi permeable. They don't have a barriers. You don't have a barrier. Suppose I want to prepare the drug molecule less than one nanometer, so that it can be passed through your cell membrane also. Here, yeah. when I prepare the nan nano collateral of less than one molecule dispersion, so I can allow this mm, drug molecule to any cell. It will penetrate to the any all the cells. But we have a some disadvantage we have it when you go into the this type of nanoparticle. So the particle do not settle down on standing, undergoes this rapid diffusion. So it will goes to the diffusion, it will go like this, it will move, it will go enter into the side and maybe coming back to the cell. So when you use that one, we don't have the control on this one, we can't control the molecule, that's called as molecular dispersions, this is called, otherwise called as molecular colloidals. Molecular colloidals, they have the less than one nanometers, best examples, we can say that, other ions and glucose we can say that, the next one is we can say that, Collateral dispersions, collateral dispersions. Particle does not resolve by the ordinary microscope. Can direct detected by your electron microscope. We can detect that one. We can detect by the electron microscope, pass through the filter paper, but not pass through the semi permeable membrane. So they can pass through the filter paper. So when you have when you put the filter paper, point micromen monometers, semi permeable membrane, filter paper, they can pass that one, but they won't allow the semi permeable membrane. Okay? So there are particles made in settled by a centrifugation. They can be settled in your centrifugation. That, that collage diffuse very slowly. Diffuse very slowly. We can say that collateral silver dissolve. The best example we can say that collateral silver dissolve solids uh, solutions otherwise neural and symmetric polymers. Neural are symptomatic synthetic polymers. We can say that synthetic polymers. Then last one is coercive dispersion. Coercive course of dispersions. So here see this one. So when you have the nano one nanometer less than one nanometer will call as molecular collaterals. So uh, one nanometer is to point micrometer. So when you solid solution one nanometer is to point micrometer will call as collateral dispersions. Then above the point five micrometers is called as the course of dispersion. Course of dispersions. So these dispersions last, last one is Corrosive dispersion particles are visible under ordinary microscope. You can see these particles. You can see these particles. Do not pass through the filter paper and semi permeable. You can, you can see the under microscope. We can see that one. It won't be passed through the filter paper and semi permeable. <coughs> but it settle down under the gravity. They don't diffuse it. They don't be diffused. That was an example. We can say this. emulsion, suspension, red blood cells. Will be, can be settled down this one, you can diffuse that one. So, correct this one. So, I can use the example of this one. So, classification based on size, we can have it dispersed system. So, one is a uh, molecular dispersions. The size is a mi one micro micrometer, one less, what is that? Less than one nanometer. The so example, we can say the glass, oxygen, oxygen gas, ordinary ions, and glucose. So, they can penetrate very fastly because uh, our blood will carry the oxygen. It has supplied to all the cells. It has supplied to all the cells. So the oxygen will diffuse fastly through your cell membrane. So it will, your permeable membrane cannot allow allows to stop that one. Your semi permeable will not allow to stop that one. So we have a that call as molecular dispersions. Let's call as dispersions. We call as 0.1 one nanometers to 0.5 micrometer. Silver salts, naturals, and synthetic polymers and lattices. We can call as Coral dispersions, sand, pharmaceutical emulsions, dispersion red blood cells. So when you want to make the drug molecules, so we are suppose best example, we are suffering with coal. We are going suffering with coal. So they'll give the drug molecule. Solutions they'll give you. Cold cough. Cough solution they'll give you. So like your uh, solution they'll provide. Otherwise we have a uh, suffering with a gas problem. They'll give the salt gels. They'll give the gels they'll give. Like your, uh, what is that? Uh, 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 anti antacid they will give you, they will give you the solutions of antacid they will give you us. Because these collaterals will be make our stomach will get freedom. So here they will be entered into a cell, they will make that one is very feasible one. 
So now we'll go for the now size and shape of colloidals. So what are you going? So when you're going to discuss about this one, so I said you about the three types we have it. Okay, okay. So point micro. So those based on size, the penetration power has been differentiated. The permeability has been differentiated. Now clear. So your size of the particle varies. Ultimately, diffusion capacity, penetration power, everything will get varied. So now I am going to discuss about the size and shape of colloidal in particular. So three types of colloidal we have it. So those colloidal will have a different size and size. So simply I can say classify this one. We have classified into three. So colloidal, so nano colloidal can be classified into three. We can write it. But now we are going to, so each and every size. What is the size? How it will influence your penetration power? How it will diffuse us? So suppose we have molecule is bigger one. It won't allow this molecule. This molecule is a very small one, it can diffuse fastly. Suppose we have in our, way, in our room, we have a air, we can't see that one. In this room is a fill up of air, we can't see that one, but it will be diffused. When you put a AC, air condition, it will be diffused to your whole room. It will be diffused to the whole. Best example, we have used the scent bottles, bottle sprays. When you spray here, it will diffuse to the whole room. Because it will be penetration, it will have a high penetration number because size of the particle is very, very small here. So those particles, the small size particles, it will be diffused very fastly. So because of this one, so we are making the normal particle into nanoparticles. So here, when you prepare the drug molecule, this drug molecule has to target the particular cell. It has to target the particular cell. So that's why we are going to prepare the nano drug solutions. But when you want to prepare the drug solutions for the multiple diseases, so I want to prepare the drug molecule for the multiple diseases, so that's why I will go with colloidal solution. Because when you have the disease, the person will have a disease, you will have multiple symptoms, you will get it. So each one disease will not have a single symptom. So one disease will have all the multiple symptoms you have. It. So that's why we are going to prepare the multiple drug colloidals. We are going to prepare this one. So now I am going to discuss about the the specific surface. So here, the surface area for unit uh, unit weight or maybe volume of material. So we are going to define that. So how is size of the particle? Surface area. So what is surface of your area of mono, each particle? We are going to define that one. Then only we can say that the size of the particle. Clear? Your surface area, we are going to define that. Your surface area will be defined that. Then we can say the size of the particle. So right on this one. Platinum is very effective. Suppose you have a larger, the position of the largest SP surface area of those. The platinum is very effective as a catalyst only when found in colloidal form. Clear? So I am saying that here this platinum is very effective. When it is in a colloidal form, but in your each needle form it won't be effective. Because it have a, it forces the large surface area. So see this one. Uh, due to large surface area which absorbs the reactants on their surface. It will absorb the reactant on the surface, so they will react with platinum. Next one is uh, the color of the colloidal solution is related to the size of the particle. Red gold salt take the blue color when the particle increases in size. So here, simply we have a small one number of colloidal solution we have it. Suppose we have okay, one, one particle have given this. So I add one more one. I add one more one. So this particle color will be differentiated. Clear? The particle color will be differentiated. So when you increase the concentration, when you increase the concentration of your nanoparticles, ultimately, depending on the size, your color of the solution will be changed on. Color of the solution will be changed on. Because the concentration of the uh, particle has increased, the particle concentration of the particles has increased, so ultimately it will possess the different colors. So for red blood cell we have it. Take example of red blood cell. Single red blood cell you are taking. So when you see the red blood cell, it will be like, it won't be shows color because the size is very, very small. It won't show this color. The size is very, very small. We can't see by our naked eye. When you put the group of red pearls, we can see the somewhat pinkish color. So when you increase the number of red pearls, it is in reddish color. Because concentration increases. The concentration of the red blood cell increases. Yeah. So because very, they are very small in size. So I cannot recognize that one. So our eye will have a particular visibility, means particular magnification power. We can't, uh, we, we will have a color luminescence we have. So though our eye cannot detect this one, we can't say that, so we don't have a color. Clear? So you don't have color transmissions. So when you increase the size, 
ultimately color will be differentiated. So some simply we can say that, so okay, based on this property, the light emission property or light absorption property, we can say the size of the particle. So here I can say that, so your particle size, the particles increases, the particles increases, ultimately color will differentiate. So more number of particles will say that different color. The more number of particles. So here the nanoparticles will exhibit the different colors. They will exhibit the different colors depending on the size. Clear? So the best example RBC. Best example RBC. RBC one more RBC we have it. We can't see this one. 10 RBC. Light pink color. Lightish pink color. 20 RBC. Dark red. 100 RBC. Too dark red. So I can say that when you have the size of the particles, number of particles, so varies ultimately the color of the solution will be also will vary. So here it will say that surface specific will be surface specific properties. You see this one. So these more extended the particles get the specific surface. The surface will be more. The surface is more. So ultimately this surface will be more. Ultimately we have a color difference. Clear? We can show the more color difference between the nanoparticles. Next one is we can see this, see this one, yeah. So when you see the one particle, they are, how they are represented here. So see this one, the two, three and four. So how it will be, this is surface, we have see this one. So, so this surface area, this is called as surface area. This is called, this see this one, this is surface area. So when your surface area varies, ultimately the color of the solution will be, you see this one here the surface area. So here, so one rod we have it. So one rod. So the surface area is very, very small. So one cube we have it. The surface area is more. So suppose platinum, this one is a platinum. So we can bind the many particles here. Clear? The many particles here. But here, this one is a other molecule. We can't bind the many particles here. Clear? Got it? So when you round surface we have it. This base surface we have it. This surface area will vary so ultimately the nanoparticle surface size will be differentiated you can say that. So this one, purification of colloidal solution. So how are you going to purify it? So here, so what do you what types of colloidals? Now we can go for this, how are you going to, so we are going to purify the colloidal solutions. You are going to purify best example. Regularly we are going to use the toothpaste morning. Milk you are going to drink it. So regularly we are going to use the different types of colloidals. Toothpaste. It will have the sugar, peppermint, and calcium carbonate. So everything it will we have a formation of foam will come. But it's in a semi-liquid. In a semi-solid. Otherwise, semi-solid, semi-liquid. So we are going to place in a hot water to be get thickened. Otherwise, we will go place in our sun rays, exposed sun rays. It will get thickened. It won't be like a, like a paste form. It won't be like a gel form. So now I think you know that, uh, what is that, uh, close up. They are adding the sugar crystals also. We can see the sugar crystals. So they will add the blue color sugar crystals, red color sugar crystals, red in blue, blue in red. They are making that one. This is a simple color. So to make the difference, to have the management capability to increase the management capability, they are giving the different types of colloidals. So now we are going to say about the types of colloidals. So I said you about the different models of colloidals. So what I have given an introduction about this one. Now I am going to say about the types of colloidals. One is side on. So we basically we can have the, based on the dispersion media. Dispersion media we have a, one is solid type colloidals. So you have a solid solid colloidals. This colloidals name and colloidals solid salt. So we can differentiate the names of colloidals. One is solid, the dispersion phase is solid, and then dispersion media is solid, we can call as solid, solid, colloidal, the color jam mm, stone, color glasses, we can say that. Next one is solid and liquid, that's called as solid, we can say that, we can call as solid. The, the paints, muddy water, gold solutions, and starch solutions, starch solutions, sulfate solutions, we can use this one. The solid gas, that's called as aerosol. We can say smoke as dust, we can say aerosol, we can, means we have a, uh, in a gas we have a solid will be there. In a gas we have a solid, so aerosol means we can use a, all the body space. Our uh, inhalers, inhalers, body, all the body space and uh, painkillers. Uh, pain 
like your volley, uh, move. We will use, they have a small tree inside. We have a uh, in, uh, drug inside, we have it. In gas, we have a drug they will add it. So to have the high penetration power, they will use the sol gel. The color sol gel. So sol we can call as aerosol, we can say. Next one is liquid in solid. So first one is dispersion phase is liquid, then dispersion media is solid. This called gel we can call as. Gel we can use it. Move gels we have it. So simply we have a in liquid we have a uh, solid we can some of the solid drug molecule we have it. This called as gel we can use it. Gel cell and CZ. Then next one is liquid liquid. That's called as emulsions. Directly emulsions, milk, milk emulsion we can prepare, otherwise uh, coal liver oil we can prepare. So they'll have the milk emulsions, we can have in multiple number of compounds, we can see this one. This is called as liquid, liquid emulsion. The next one is we can say that liquid gas emulsion, that's called as liquid aerosol. Mist, fog and cloud. Mist, fog and cloud, we can write this one. Then gas and liquid, solid foam, foam rubber, fumic stone. The next one is gas and liquid you can use the foam, fourth and fifth foam. Okay, PP foam we can use. So what is the use of this one actually? So all this one are same. So almost all we can say that. So we are going to prepare the multiple components. Multiple components to use in a single piece. So when you are going to prepare the nano solution, nano collaterals, to use the, to have the high penetration power, to reduce the capability of our, to increase the capability of our drug molecules, to increase the capability of our drug molecules, fast and faster action. It shows the very, very high fast action for your nano colloidal salt. So here, so these types of colloidal solutions, you can see this one. So these colloidal solutions we can use for the different um, purposes, different purposes we can, so you see here, so all this one colloidals will be associated, different shapes will be exhibited. So, so types of colloidals in water. So here, when you take the colloidals, when you are going to take the new different mixtures, you are going to add it. Suppose I want to prepare the you know, colloidal form, red colloidals, I can use the water as a solvent. I can use the liquid, different solvents, I can use it. So in these phases, we are going to use the colloidal solutions. These colloidal solutions will exhibit the different types of use and different types of applications. So best example, drug colloidals. You can, I can go and discuss about the drug colloidals. So first one is aerosols. Aerosols of mo. So what will happen here? So when you have a person is suffering with some pain, they are suffering with some pain. So they will mix the drug molecule and different gas molecules. So these gas should not be an toxic gas. They, they don't be an toxic gas. They have to. So these gas should be an inert gas. They have, they have to use the inert gases. They have to. So those gases should not interfere your cellular system. So when you use this gas, when you use this gas, they don't be interfere your cellular system. The gas should be not effective your metabolism also. So when you want to use the drug, the collateral drug, collateral emulsions, gas emulsion, aerosol, I want to use it. So first I need to check this gas, what is the gas I am going to use it. So this gas should not interfere your metabolism also. When it will interfere your metabolism, so ultimately your cell will get affected. So we need to check the gases also. So here we can check the gas, how we are going to affect it. So they are going to expose the gas with the different molecules. They are going to check the wall. Gas exposed to the particular person, they'll have the, they'll do the clinical trials, they make the clinical trials, then only they'll use the gas molecules. But again, it's a drug molecule. Suppose gas and drug, I'm saying that. Uh, liquid, aerosol, emulsion, something. So again, drug is all take it. They'll take the drug molecules, they'll enter the size and shape, so how they are penetrating to the cell. So then only they'll prepare the gas emulsion. So in case of ointments, best example, we can say this. So when you buy the ointments, They'll write that only external. So when you check the drug molecules, so instead of uh, what is that uh, tablets, instead of tablets, so when you take the creams, when you take the uh, cosmetic creams, some of the pain creams, they'll write that in red color. Uh, they'll give label. They'll give for external use only. Even when you have the aerosol, you buy move aerosol, move aerosol, maybe only aerosol. They'll write that only external. We are not in have that one. We are not supposed to. Inhale, we are not supposed to take that one. But in case of inhaler, uh, asthma patient, they lose inhaler. So they will write that. They can inhale the one with the oral only. So here, each and every drug molecule, each and every colloidal solution, each and every drug, every drug, drug or colloidal solution, we need to give the pathway. Pathway won't give it. So how we are going to inject it? How we are going to inhale it? So everything has been tested, then only we will prepare the 
collateral solutions, those collateral solutions may have the high penetration power when compared to the other one. So that's why they are preparing the nano collaterals. Nano, when you compare the collaterals, when you, come, when you take the collaterals, these nano collaterals are very faster because the size is very slice, small. So the nano collateral will have a bigger size in their size. But when you prepare this one into nano collaterals, nano collaterals, they have high penetration power, high action, the site specific. They will show the site specific. So I have prepared the yeah, oxygen collateral solution. I have prepared the oxygen with other collateral solution. So oxygen will don't have the high diffusion power. Oxygen will have high diffusion power. Ultimately, will go and target your RBC. It will go and target your RBC cells. Suppose I give other gas I use, sometimes it won't be active. It won't be active. So when you're going to prepare the collaterals with your different so combinations, when you're going to prepare the collaterals with the different combination, we will take care about the how it will be sustained in a collateral form. Collateral means mixture. <coughs> mixture means there should be in a mixture, they don't be settled down. Suppose milk when you take an arbor milk, can you filter? Can you get anything from your milk? So I have used the filter paper, I have filtered the milk. Can you get any debris? No. Suppose when you add lemon water in your milk, I can filter that one. Only I can get the liquid part and solid part. Because here the collateral has been disturbed down. They are in a mixable form. They are in a mixable form. So they are in a solid form, sol solubility form. They are called as they are a soluble form. They are in a soluble form. So when you change the pH here, the pH of the protein has been affected here. The pH of the casein protein. The pH of the casein protein has been affected. When you change the pH, pH ultimately the protein will become a dissolved form to undissolved form. Dissolved form to undissolved form. Ultimately, it will be the collateral has been disturbed on. The collateral has been disturbed on. So what I am saying here means, so when you want to use the now drug molecules as a collateral form, it won't disturb our system. The collateral has no, it should not be disturbed our system. It should be an Phase of our collateral nature and should be not effective of metabolism and your cellular system. So finally, I can say that all the nano collaterals has to prepare based on our cellular. System. So why you are you using this actually? So what is your that nano collaterals, nano emulsions, nano clusters? This is all for our human welfare only. All for our human welfare. Did not cause any discomfort to your human beings, then only to be accepted. So here, so all the nano corals should be in a human welfare only. They should be prepared for the adverse, but not an average, only for advantage you should be have it. So only few of the disadvantages should be there. So that's why they, it can be accepted. So all the nano corals can be accepted when you have the more advantages. When you have more disadvantages, it should be a ban, we can say that. We can say that the uh, scientists, they can ban that one before approval of the coming to the market. So this is about your nano collaterals. So tomorrow I can say about the nano clusters.